I forgot my coffee. Ah! Hi guys. Welcome to BF Fiber Arts by Tamsin. I'm Tamsin. I think I should get bonus points. A thumbs up for every time I remember to introduce myself. <laughs> I might end up with like two thumbs up and that's it. <laughs> so, it's the zombie apocalypse. We need to survive. We need to know how in a post-apocalyptic world, we can continue to do our fiber crafts, which are no longer a hobby, but now a necessity. So last video, we had our rock and our stick, and we spun some wool. Not the greatest wool in the entire world, but yeah, it's strong. And because it's so airy, it's going to be warm. And because the lanolin is still in it, it's also going to be water resistant. These are all things that are good in the zombie apocalypse. So we could knit or crochet with this. But what I want to do today is I want to, and I haven't tried this, okay? This is literally me attempting to do these things as if I was actually in the zombie apocalypse. Um, with no experience, just a general idea of how things are done and can I make it work. So today I want to make a pin loom. Now I'm assuming that our access to tools has been greatly decreased, but everyone should have a Leatherman, including me. This is my cool little skeleton Leatherman, and it's got the little clip so you can hang it on your belt, and it's got the little pliers. And it does have a sort of screwdriver here with the uh, extra tip hidden in the handle. Oh, it's on this side there. And it has a blade. So the other tool that I would have in the zombie apocalypse would be an ax or a handsaw, or even just like a little you know, wire, twisted wire that you could cut things with. I have neither. I'm not going to get one right now because, you know, it's not the zombie apocalypse yet and I would be with family members who would have saws and axes. So with my Leatherman tool and these to substitute for my axe or saw. Just roll with it, okay? I'll do it properly later. So what happened is I had to trim down my lilac tree. So I have this big chunk and I would cut this piece right here out of it. But because I don't have my ax or saw and my little tools that I do have won't cut that off, I'm just gonna leave it attached to the big branch and we're gonna work with it. I also have some smaller branches from my lilac tree and I'm going to use these to make the pin for the loom and we're going to use the thicker branch to be the base for the loom. I have no idea if it's going to work guys. We might need a drill, we might need a hammer and nails, I don't know what we're going to need but for starters we're going to make some pins for our loom and maybe try to make some holes for those pins. Um, drilling the hole through these is going to be the tricky part and I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I might find a hammer and a nail and use that to make it because I think finding a rock and a nail is possible. Maybe that's what I'll do. I will take my rock and a nail to make the holes for the pin loom because I'm sure you could find a nail somewhere and it wouldn't be hard to carry in your pack. So there wouldn't be a whole lot of weight there. You could keep it with you all the time. 
as a survival tool. I, I think it's doable. All right, I'm going to reposition the camera. We're going to cut up some pins and I will find a nail so we can use our hammer and a nail to make holes in our pins. Back in a minute. All right, so I've gathered my stuff. And first thing we're gonna do is trim up this branch to make dowels out of it for our pinlin. So we want chunks of the branch that are roughly the same size. So the first thing we gotta do is take off all these little branches. Now this is a really good chunk right here, so I'm going to use my bigger thingies here. And I'm going to cut that part off because that's a very consistent size. Set that to the side. And I think this one is pretty close. So I'm going to cut that off. These are like the best I've ever bought. I'll put that to the side. I'm gonna keep that one too, just in case. All right. Toss all this little stuff to the side. I also have an old broken rake, which I might use to try to fluff some fiber just for fun. These are just things I found in my yard. And chunk of lumber might come in handy at some point, we'll hold on to it. All right, now. Our pins don't have to be perfectly straight. It's more important, I think, that they're the same size. At least the theory is in my head. So I think a lot of this could be used. So we're gonna cut that piece off and keep that. And here's another chunk. This one's nice and straight. All the way up here, get rid of that, and cut it off. No, I'm going to cut this part off. So there's another branch that could be useful. So I'll throw all that away. The plug. Kick all that stuff out of your way. Oh. All right. I have my tools and I found some nails. I have a little one that's got a wide shaft on it, probably good for starting, a nice smooth one, and a twisted one. Don't know if any of them will work, we'll give it a try. So let's start with making our pins. We probably only need them, I mean if we put that much in the log, we have that much sticking up. We'll have to move it often, but I think that'll be fine. So, if you have an ax or a saw, you can do this part. Make them roughly the same length. So there's three. Now that one is quite a bit thicker at the base, but up here it's better. It's just got little twiggies on the side, but we can cut them off.
All right. This one here. If you can hear that, that's my neighbor's dog. She has separation anxieties. So when people come home, that's how she reacts. When I first moved in, I thought a dog had gotten hit on the road. I've gotten used to it now, so when I hear her, I'm just like, oh, they're home. <laughs> or someone's come to visit her. Quarantine puppies. <clears throat> okay. So I have six chunks here that I'm going to use for pins. I'm just going to move the rest of this to the side. And we have our log, which again, if I had a saw or an axe, I would cut down. Let me move back a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Hopefully you can still hear me. So we have our sticks here. And we're going to need holes in our log to stick these in. And we're going to need holes in our sticks to put our thread through. So, I'm going to start, oh, I also have this little knife. But I'm going to start with my Leatherman tool. And you can see how this stick has got little stickies coming off it. So I'm going to attempt to cut those off and I'm going to be very careful to cut away from myself because you can't get stitches easily in the zombie apocalypse. All right, so we've made a discovery. Anything with a lot of little stickies off the side like this is going to be too much work. So we'll toss that to the side. This one's nice and smooth. It's only got one little stick right here. So I think we can probably smooth that off. Yes, that came off fairly easily. Um, this one has one little bump. So we're gonna cut that off. We can uh, smooth them out. Now this one has a bump at the end. It's got two knobs on the side and two knobs at the bottom. So I'm going to say this one's going to be more effort than it's worth. So we're down to four pins, but we're just looking for proof of concept, so I'm not worrying about having a lot of sticks to do this with. Now, we could peel these, but I'm worried that the sap then will stick. Of course, they'll dry eventually, so why don't we go ahead and peel these. This is kind of fun. <laughs> and you can use the bark scraps to light a fire. Okay, we're just going to peel one because I can feel the sap is sticky. So we'll peel one and we'll leave the rest of them with the bark intact for now. So we got one peeled and three unpeeled. And I've got bark pieces all over me. But this would be a good fire starter. All right. So we need to make holes in our branch to insert these pins. And we want them fairly close together. So 
I'm going to mark where I want to make my holes. I'm going to take some of this bark off. A draw knife would be really handy right about now. A draw knife is what they used to use in the olden days to strip logs. They're a very handy tool. And yes, I have used one. I strip poles for a barn. Okay, so this is going to be our base. There's more fire starter. Now we have to try to figure out how we're going to make our holes in this. So I think the first thing I want to do is make a pilot hole for each one so we know where to dig. I'm going to readjust the camera so you're down here closer and can see what I'm doing. And then you don't have to look at my stupid face. <laughs> All right, here's our log. This is our strip place. Assume we've cut it off in two places so that we're dealing with a smaller piece. I'm going to take a nail and my handy dandy little spinning rock. We're going to use this as a hammer because having tools with multiple purposes is always a good thing. We need a little bit of a ding. Where's my other nails? Let's try this one. By the way, I'm a horrible hammer, hammerer, even with a hammer. So me doing this with a rock is extra funny. All right, so we got it in there to get it back out. We're going to use our pliers on our Leatherman tool. Now we've got the start of a hole. So, going back to our Leatherman tool, I'm going to pull out our knife and start using it as a drill. Now we want to get some of that debris out of there, so I'm just going to cut that off. So I'm already seeing that this is going to take a long time and it's going to be a total pain in the ass. So since our goal is just something to hold our pins upright so we can weave around them, I'm going to go with a different thing because it just occurred to me and I'm thinking it might work better. Now, if you had a drill, no problem. Just drill out some holes, put your spikes in there, and away you go. But we need to put a hole through this stick to put our fiber through. So let's go back to our nails. We're going to try our twisty one this time. Get my rock. start of our hole. I'm just going to get that twist. Now I would recommend doing this with green branches because otherwise they'll probably just split. Now I'm going to switch up to my short little smooth wide nail. it split. That sucks. 
But I wonder, oh, I've had a thought. Rather than putting a hole through here to hold the fiber, what if we just, I wanna not slice myself doing this. I'm not pushing down much on this because I do not wanna cut myself. Just kind of wiggling it in there. So we can get a little bit of a slot and then see. If we can actually deliberately split this. Okay. There we go. Split it open just a bit so that we can then take our fiber this is extra dirty because my cat's I'd left it in the catio and my cats took it and they rolled around in the dirt with it and generally had fun with it. So it's extra dirty. All right. Untangle this. Okay. So then what we can do is we can just put that through there and it will hold it for weaving. Oh, so much easier. And in the process of doing that, I figured out part two, we can just pop them in the ground. Okay, this is gonna work. So I'm going to take my other three sticks here, split the top so we can have a place to hold our yarn. And I'm gonna set up using the ground to hold the pins. I'll be back in a minute. All right, here's my zombie apocalypse pin loom. I just split the pins and put the fiber between them. I've hammered them into the ground and I tied the ends together. Here I have some of my clun forest that I just washed with cold water so I spun in the grease. So the lanolin is going to help it stick together. So what I'm basically going to do is just kind of draft it out into a roving. I don't want to pull it completely apart because I want it to hold together. Now, I've used my rock spun fiber to make the warp, and this is going to become the weft. Now, this would be good for making like um, a ground cloth to sleep on because the lanolin is still in it. It's going to be water resistant, and any water it does soak up, the wool will still be warm. It'll still be able to retain heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start weaving around our posts. So if it comes apart, just overlap it. Now I pulled the warp behind the pin and down so that it goes down the length of the post. Now, I'm obviously not working in the cleanest conditions right here, but it's the zombie apocalypse. We do what we must.
pushing this all down. And I'm drinking my coffee. All right. So we'll just drop this out a bit more. I could probably make it a bit thinner. Like I said, I've never done any of this before. I just know the theories. I've never actually put them into practice. So this is all learning for me too. But adaptability and ingenuity are going to be very important in the zombie apocalypse. So we will just continue to practice and try. Okay, I'm going to drop that out a little thinner. Just keep weaving around our pins here. Cheapers. <laughs> A couple of chipmunks chasing each other just scared the crap out of me. They go running towards the catio. The cats are going to catch them. You know, other than the veggie matter, this fleece is really clean. Like, the cold water really got the dirt out of it. We're getting a lot of fiber on these short little pins. I'm actually very impressed. And I'm not expecting perfection, of course, because this is my first time doing it. I just want to see what we can do with some sticks and a rock and a knife and some fleece. Now, if your little slots got to be too spread, you could just put a knot in your warp to keep it from sliding off. Oh, I'm actually quite enjoying this. This is fun. <laughs> I don't know how usable it's going to be, but it's sure fun to do. I'm just kind of drafting it off the lump of fleece I'm holding. I don't want to draft it too far, though, or it'll pull apart. So we've gotten this far. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to tuck it under some of our weft. Tuck it through there. Now, we're going to see what happens yeah. when we go to move it onto our warp. So we will pull our pin up and we will slide this off onto the warp and then pop our pin back in the hole. Pull it up, slide it off, and you can see how the warp runs through the center of that. That's what the pin part does. Slide it off, pop it back in the hole. Last one. Oh, I got that one deep. Slide it off. And pop it back in the hole. So then we can just move this all the way down to the end of our warp and we can make it as long as we want and we can just keep going. Now this is pretty fuzzy but I think if we had a little bit of soap we could then felt that 
into a lovely mat. But if we used a finer warp, like more threads per inch, we could probably make that pretty solid. But this is like light and airy and very full of veggie matter because like I said, I'm not working in the cleanest conditions here. I'm just looking for proof of concept. So in theory, then you have a bedroll. You could lay this down on the ground and that would insulate you from the cold and the wet. It's nice and squishy, so it would be soft to lie on. And the insulating properties would be amazing. You can see how dirty it got. With time, this would felt into a beautiful sleeping pad. That is actually kind of cool. All right, we have proof of concept. Now it's to refine the process. But in a pinch, some sticks in the ground with little slots on them. Put your rock spun fiber on it. Use your washed fleece. You can make something that's going to keep you warm, even if it gets wet. So, are we ready for the zombie apocalypse? Hmm. We're getting there. I think I'll uh, work on refining this process a little bit. See if we can get our fleece a little cleaner. Find a way to work with this. I'm thinking if we had like a old plastic bag, we could poke through the hole, poke the holes through the plastic bag and lay our fleece on that to keep it clean. Um, the nice thing would be that you could make this as long and wide as you want. And as far as like carrying it, as you're fleeing from the zombies, it's going to be very light. So you're going to get the maximum benefits out of this. So for your weight to heat ratio, this is going to be your best bet. And you don't have to spin your weft, just your warp. So that's going to be a time saver there too. You can see where I started to draft it out a little finer that it looks better. But I'm thinking really putting the, our warps closer together would hold that together even better. You can see at the beginning I was very poofy with it and then I started drawing it down to make it thinner and tighter and it's making a better fabric for us. And then when you're done you can just tie off your warps and there you go. You have a ground cloth or a blanket. You could probably even make a whole cloak out of this and keep yourself warm in the winter. I actually really like this. I want to do further with this. So I'm going to play around with this and see if I can make it better. But for today, that's our lessons in surviving the zombie apocalypse. So I hope you enjoyed this little foray into surviving the zombie apocalypse, post-apocalyptic life skills. I'm kind of thrilled with it. I mean, is this a hit out of the park? Absolutely not. Is it a start? Absolutely. So if you like this, do the stuff down below because I do stuff like this all the time and you need to know that you have post-apocalyptic life skills right there in your hands. Thanks for joining me guys. Dr. Chaos out.